first of all, fitness <coughs> update. Chris Wokes, Ben Stokes appear to be taking full part in training. Are they all clear to play? And if so, does Ben Stokes take on full bowling responsibilities too? Yeah, uh, Chris Wokes is 100% uh, fit. Has come through the last two or three days really well. Um, ben Stokes has had a little bowl today. We will see how he pulls up tomorrow to see how much he will bowl. Um, but I certainly see him bowling. Um, also, selection issues. One issue that people have been talking about is Jason Roy and whether Johnny Bairstow maybe has a shot at, at playing. Have you made a has a decision been made on that? Yeah, uh, the decision will remain the same throughout the tournament. Jason Roy is our um, a part of our strong opening partnership with Alex Hales. He will definitely play. And Johnny Bairstow then. Johnny Bairstow will miss out. Unfortunately, it's been the case like that for the last couple of years. He's been very good when he's come in, um, but each and every one of us within the batting department has had uh, ups and downs for over the years, and one of the strongest parts of reinforcing the way that we play and the freedom in which we play with is backing that up with selection. So if it was the case that if, if perhaps Jason didn't fire in the first couple of games, would you look again, or have you decided this is, this is our team, this is the way we're going to go for the tournament? Um, I cannot see it changing. So. Sorry. If I can just ask as well, obviously you won the series against, against South Africa. The defeat and the manner of the defeat the other day, could you look back on that and think actually that was quite welcome? That could serve as a bit of a wake-up call for a team that's been used to racking up sort of 300 plus. If you're looking for positives out of it, absolutely. It's, um, it certainly was a, a wake-up call in the fact that you need to be able to adapt in different circumstances. And when you play against one of the better sides in the world, you can be susceptible to uh, things like that happening, given conditions. How much, sorry, last one. How much do you need to guard against any sort of complacency? We saw Bangladesh lose heavily here uh, yesterday as, as well, and you're, you're a team in good form, but how important is it to get off to that good start and, and not take them? I think it's a very important, particularly given that this competition is, is very unforgiving. Um, you pretty much need to win every game uh, in order to, to guarantee a good run throughout the tournament. And I think that's exciting within itself. We need to bring our A game and if we're going to win this trophy. And if, if at the end of it we are holding the trophy, I think we'll have played really well. Uh, the Champions Trophy's had a bit of a checkered history. The ICC have tried to dump it a couple of times and people mix it up a bit with the World Cup. I mean, but how important is it to England and this team to perform I think well and win? I think it's really important. We're not very fortunate enough to play in tri-series where you're exposed to must-win games. And I suppose the Champions Trophy, the beauty of it is that whoever does win the trophy will have thoroughly deserved it because, like I've mentioned, you can be knocked out and... and I suppose mistakes can be taken advantage of and limiting those mistakes and uh, I suppose focusing on your strengths as a side is a very important part of winning it. Um, I mean, that's a real vote of confidence for Jason. You must rate him highly and it's, it's part of your thinking that in that series against New Zealand when you all had lift off, he didn't get that many but he was playing the way you wanted him to play and he came through that and became an important member of the side. Absolutely. I think if you're looking uh, at familiar circumstances, you know, pre-T20 World Cup, in a very similar case, he went out and got runs in a warm-up game against New Zealand and then was a huge part of us getting to the final of that T20 tournament. And if we want our players to play KG or without freedom, yes, we would change things and probably half of us wouldn't be here. Um, so backing it up with selection and the way that we want to play. You know, Jason really epitomises the way that we play, the aggression in which he plays. He always plays for the team. Um, and he plays in the manner that, that is dictated by that. So he's a very important part of our side. Julian? Yeah. Well, sorry, just going back to Ben, would you be prepared to play him as a batsman only if he's not fit to bowl? If, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a very strange injury in that it's only in his delivery stride that he feels the pain. So if given he, he, he couldn't bowl, I still, still think he'd make great contributions with the bat and in the field. Oh, and you've got the World Cup here in two years' time. Do you think this side is still some way from its peak, some way from fulfilling its potential? And is that what you really look for? I think we've a long way to go. I think realistically, if we need to be contenders for the World Cup, we need to get our world ranking up. We need to play... I suppose you really need this squad of players playing the majority of the games between now and then to gain experience. If you look at the strongest sides in the world that get to later stages of the World Cup, 
I think the average of average cap in a side is a uh, it's around 100. So all of our guys would have to play the majority of those games in order to be serious contenders. And if things go well, I think we're in a good position to do that. Uh, Dean and John. Uh, I mean, Virat Kohli obviously played quite a lot of cricket against you in the winter and suggests that this England one-day team doesn't have any weaknesses. Do you think that's mind games or do you think he's speaking from the heart? <laughs> Last night he told me that we needed to change a game in front of everybody and sort of had a bit of a laugh about it. But again, it's a compliment. I'll take it as a compliment. Um, you know, somebody like that saying something complimentary about your team, you know, you have to take it in that regard. And I just wondered as well whether in the past couple of years, obviously, you've talked much more about the performance than the results. Obviously, now you're in a tournament. The results are the only thing that really matters. Are you drilling that home to the players? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's about delivering um, in every game. It's been our focus now for the last couple of series that we've played in. Um, like I have mentioned before, the first cycle of our development in the first year that we were together was about pushing the limits and see how far we can go. Um, combining that, the second year was about playing smart cricket, uh, adapting to situations and taking advantage of that, and then the result would look after itself. Now it's, uh, it's time to combine all three. John, then Steve, then we'll finish with two more after that. Uh, you speak, Owen, regularly about, um, as you just said, pushing the limits and playing aggressively. Do you have to keep reminding the players to do that, or is it now so embedded in their DNA that they do it anyway? I think it is embedded. I think it's just the way that we play. We don't necessarily have to speak about the manner in which we go about it. Um, we're always looking to get on the front foot, taking advantage of any uh, mistake opposition makes or a weakness we feel that they are exposed to. Owen, how do you look back on the journey that you've been on since that night in Adelaide? And there's obviously some symmetry as well. A low moment getting beaten by Bangladesh and now you're opening a tournament on home soil when you're favourites against the same opposition. Yeah, it's probably since then we've been on a huge upward curve and we've been tremendously lucky in the fact that we've been, uh, we've had a group of players that have, have bought into a way of playing and enjoyed it and executed it extremely well. At no stage have we second-guessed ourselves or the direction that we're going in and that's very pow powerful as a group, I think. And from my side of things, I think it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, to work with this group of players and have such a great backroom staff and have the backing of that as well. Um, uh, the last two times you played against Bangladesh in the ICC event, both times you, your team lost. Uh, so tomorrow, will that be on your mind and are your team uh, out to take revenge about those two lost? I think recent form you have to take into account. Um, the last time we played them obviously was a uh, home series for Bangladesh and we know how strong they are at home. I think that was the first time that they were beaten in five series at home. Um, so we take a lot of confidence from that. We know they're a, a strong team and this is their first Champions Trophy, so that comes with an element of pressure as well. So tomorrow's a big day for everybody. We're really looking forward. And last one from Chris. Um, Owen, I'm asked you about that, that game in Adelaide 15 months ago. It seems like a hell of a long time ago now. Do you use the memory of that as any kind of motivation going into not just this tournament, but in the 15 months since? Um, there's a lot of motivation that, that drives, I suppose, us to train better and train harder. Um, personally, that's not one I use. Um, I know a lot of the guys were involved in the T20 World Cup in the, in, sorry, against the West Indies in India. That's certainly a driving force behind the hard work that we put in. Um, obviously, a gentle reminder that you never win a game until the last ball is bowled. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, still here.